and I'll get you a good little spine model too. Okay. All right. So first the things first is we'll talk a little bit about sciatica, just briefly. Mm -hmm. So right here, okay, right there. Yep. Oops, sorry. That's all good. <laughs> that's that's what this is for, for you to mess around with. And I'll I'll okay. portray that. So pretty much sciatica is when you kind of pinch the nerve or the yeah. sciatic nerve that goes down. If we look at the distribution or the route or the road on which this takes, we can see that there are different branches of that, right? We see mm -hmm. the main road that goes down and it kind of splits this way, it can mm -hmm. kind of splits that way. Uh, and you probably can recall that where it went, you know, when it happened two, mm -hmm. three, four, five, X amount of years ago. Typically, true sciatica, true sciatica is where we take the disc, and I'll show you on this little model here, and we kind of compress the heck out of it to, so much so that it actually pinches on that nerve yeah. down there. There's two really, t there's three or four different types, but I'm, I'm just going to give you like two basic types that most, most commonly occur. The first one is a disc bulge. The second is a disc herniation. Mm -hmm. A disc bulge is when we kind of compress down and it goes backwards. Okay. And it kind of, it's like stepping on the jelly donut a little bit, but not so much that it squeezes out. Yeah. The second one is where we kind of pop it off and we kind of like step on that jelly donut and the ooze or the jelly starts to go on the side of the road and then as a result, ants come and that's the inflammation, right? Okay. Uh, that causes a severe amount of inflammation and pain. Most people are in pain for two to four weeks on those types of cases. Oh, okay. So um, I'll explain what I think happened to you, why I think what happened to you. Most people um, are typically dealing with a disc bulge uh, possibly a herniation, and if it is a herniation, we record it in what we call millimeters. They, uh, they took x-rays, and they, they said I had moderate to severe in certain places in my, my yeah. disc. Yeah. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. So when this gets compressed... But when I called them back, because I wanted to know what did that mean, and she said it, it's just wear and tear. Yes. So what nor there is normal wear and tear yeah. with uh, aging. Yeah. Despite the common myth is, hey, you have arthritis, you you have arthritis, I have arthritis. We all do, by the way. Um, we all do. If we X-ray or MRI somebody, whether they're 18 years old or more, I think I think the statistic is 98% of us have some sort of arthritic concerns somewhere in our body. The question is, are you or are you symptomatic? Because if you have a disc bulge and you have a disc bulge, but yet you're symptomatic and you're not what's the major difference? It could be the activity, it could be the time on your feet, it could be the sit-ups, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So if you have, I'm not gonna really talk to you about um, what I don't think is happening to you, I'm only gonna talk to you about what I think is happening to you. Okay. I think you're having more of a disc bulge, okay. more so than a herniation, otherwise you wouldn't be in this office uh, with a, I'm just gonna say like a, uh, you wouldn't be under like a five out of 10. Yeah, You right. know, even with, yeah, yeah, even despite uh, that. And what I was trying to do is when I lift your legs, yes, I know I'm dealing with the hamstrings. Yeah. Uh, what I'm doing actually is I'm pulling down the nerve oh, going okay. down. So I'm actually tugging on the on the spine. I had you do I did all these other messages and things that I was doing neurologically. Even bending down and touching your toes, a lot of people think that's a range of motion test. It's it is, but it's not really the primary thing. What I'm trying to do is pull the, the nervous system in this way in this direction. So to see if it pisses it off. Right. If it pisses it off, you wouldn't even be able to go halfway right. to where you were, maybe even a quarter with, right. a, with a herniation. Uh, even two plus weeks out, right. you'd probably be screaming at me. Uh, I would have stopped the testing on gotcha. you a lot sooner is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I was saying to you, I think you really are in pretty decent shape for somebody who had right. this injury. Good. So let's see what actually happened. You pretty much did this. <laughs> right. So when we naturally bend forward, and this is a natural human move, when we bend forward, we do this naturally. But a disc can get weakened over time. It's not, quote, one thing that happened. Uh, Sit-ups and uh, kick-ups and leg flutters and um, full sit-ups and crunches are the worst exercise okay. for the spine. Mm. Think about it like this. If we are, have a hinge, right? Here's our hinge. Like a Mr. Pac-Man, right? We do this, enough of that hinging will wear away at this part. When we bend forward, we're hinging from our spine. Mm -hmm. If you notice how our spine actually works, it's not supposed to be the major hinge. The hips have this ball and socket joint 
like this that create this huge variety of range of motion for so that we can get into that mobility. So if you start losing hip mobility, where do you start hinging from? You start hinging from the spine, you start doing the wear and tear through there, not necessarily through there. So most back injuries actually occur as a lack of uh, movement through the hips and more of a movement through the spine. So technically, this is an overuse injury, uh, too much movement in the spine. Uh, I would assume that you have a firm bed and prefer a firm bed because of that. We just firmed it up a little bit, yeah. So the reason most people like a firmer bed is because they actually um, get more stability from the, from the firmness Therefore, they don't need to rely on their stability of their own body, which oh. is totally fine. Like, I, I'm okay with that. Uh, but I would definitely avoid sit-ups, uh, crunches, uh, the leg kicks. Because remember when I lifted your legs, yeah. you felt that? That naturally increases the pressure, and it does kind of like this to it. And right now, it just tells me that you're still symptomatic partially, right. not entirely. But So you do want to take it somewhat ev uh, easy. What you guys were both doing in terms of walking is the most beneficial thing you can do okay. uh, I think a lot of people underrate how powerful walking okay. is it's uh, if you look at the research it's one of the best things you could do for longevity anyway um, and for a lot of exercise in my stomach I, I will tell you some stuff okay. uh, I'll definitely tell you some stuff uh, because we do want to exercise your your spine but think about this ready imagine all these blocks yeah whatever direction you want to put them in up down left right it doesn't matter if we can learn how to keep them stable and keep this mobile, that's pretty much the key to your back pain. Okay. And now, uh, you probably don't need much care, but what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna release a lot of the hips through the front of the hip groins to help improve your mobility. Cool. We'll free up some of the back area to help improve you know, your comfort and stuff like that. And then I'll give you some tips and things that you can do to help you help yourself. Um, the first phase, really, if, if you're still in some pain, is to one, get you out of pain, which you kind of did most of that. Two, ensure that that pain doesn't come back. And I call that scab picking. Uh, we gotta eliminate the things that are hurting you, sit ups, crunches, things yeah. like that. Uh, and then we gotta um, come up with a plan that says, hey, this is, this is actually like what you need to do, this is what you should avoid. And now that you've quote, followed that through for a week or two weeks, now that you feel a lot better, let's move on to the strengthening phase. Got it. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's really pretty straightforward. And the fact that you're not having neurologic symptoms is like two thumbs up. Um, your, healing, yeah. your healing skyrockets a lot faster Okay. Uh, you, in terms of recovery. So it's not a bad injury. No. Uh, it's just that you did this to it. Oh. And like on one of the sit-ups or something? You probably, just kind of like did the meat You're probably doing this. Donut? Yeah, you're probably just kind of like stepping on the jelly donut, like, yeah. like CPRing mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. And to a point where it was just like, dude, eh, eh, eh. All right, now there's enough inflammation back there that the whole thing is just lit up like a Christmas yeah. tree. And it's just like, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, you do have some residual effects from that. I can tell from just like holding your legs up. Uh, but that doesn't mean that's a bad thing. It's common in almost every low back pain. Okay. Uh, and that's why sitting to standing uh, and, you know, sit-ups are mm -hmm. hard because what people do is they go from forward flexion yeah. up and then they come through here, and that's mm -hmm. pressure change. Just like a, a pressure change going from the, an airplane going from here to here on our ears, this is a pressure change in the spine when there's compression on there. So it actually yep. changes the pressure in the, in the disc itself. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we gotta, I'm gonna teach you actually how to stand properly too, believe oh, it or good. not. Yeah. Because uh, uh, these subtle little things will help you significantly because uh, that's the scat picker. The scat picker is not necessarily what you're doing, if I just say stop sit up, you're like, okay, well, that makes sense. Uh, but if I say, well, stop standing up, you're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Let's just show you how to do it right. Okay. Um, and I'll show you that first uh, before we get started. Right. Any questions? No. Cool. All right, so let's treat you. I do a lot 